The F-101 Voodoo was the first Mach 2 fighter interceptor in the world. It first flew in 1954, and by 1957 it set the world speed record at 1,207 miles per hour. They were built by McDonnell in their St. Louis, Missouri plant. The first 675 went to the United States Air Force. Then in 61 and 62, an additional 132 were bought by the Royal Canadian Air Force. These are the only two countries that flew the Voodoo. And this was the golden age of jet fighter design and America phased out the Voodoo in about a decade. Canada, however, used theirs much longer until deep into the 1980s when they replaced it with the F-18 Hornet. By the early 70s, the Davis-Monthan Air Force Base had hundreds of retired aircraft in the boneyard. Canada traded 56 of their worn-out birds for 66 low-mileage airframes. This one here was built for the United States Air Force in 1957 with the serial number 57-363. It was an F-101B model, and it served with the 62nd Fighter Intercept Squadron at Luke Air Force Base in Phoenix, Arizona. By 1968, it was retired and parked at davis Monthan Air Force Base in Tucson, Arizona. A couple of years later, Canada came along and bought a whole bunch of them to bolster their aging fleet. In 1971, she became serial number 101035, when she was transferred to the newly organized Canadian Armed Forces. The Royal Air Force was amalgamated with the Army and Navy in a cost-cutting measure. This airplane went to Quebec and served with the 425th Squadron until 1984 when it was transferred to the 409th Squadron in Comox, BC. In 1987, it was made into a trainer and then it was fully retired in June of 1992. It's been parked at the Abbotsford Air Port ever since and this is the second position it's in uh, the first one was uh, right over here by the administration building of the airport and here we are inside the and here we are inside the landing gear well Here's this is the closing point. This must close against this here. Here's an adjustment for the door closing. A hydraulic actuator. Wow. Single tire with the brake enclosed. I like their mount here. It just grabs right to the bottom. That's the jack jack position, obviously. So this is the afterburner section of the engine. The engines have been re removed, but I believe those are the fuel bars there. So this is the afterburner section of the aircraft. Diffuser bars. Kind of really hot back here. That chunk that sticks out the end is about maybe six feet long. She's holding the markings of the 409th Squadron, the last squadron she flew with, and there's the Canadian number 101035. Interesting. What is the heating engine like? Got a crack. This is all tapered. It's all filed down. It's quite thick here. And then this is been made into a knife edge. That's called a, a fence. It's an aerodynamic aid that's added to the aircraft after design. It's got another fence way up there. Some bypass doors in, for the engine. Inlet bypass doors over here. What would that be? Some kind of an indicator. 
the new door. And you can see the engines are out. They would start right behind that cone. At the first stage of the compression blades. Quite nice looking at this. Quite solid. Quite nice to look at it like this. That looks like some that looks like some kind of service door right there. And this looks like a service door. This looks like it opens up. This piece looks newer as well. Somehow. And this piece looks newer too. This doesn't look these don't look real. These don't look real. I wonder if this was the uh, communications door where they plugged into. Here's another aerodynamic fence down there, and that is a really sturdy one. Gotta say. Uh, this looks like a grounding port. See a grounding, grounding port there? So when they fuel it, they probably plug into there. That's probably a static port for the, for the avionics. These are catches. These open up very easily, and this is a door that opens. That's an airspeed indicator. This is an air temperature reading, probably. This is another antenna of some sort. You can see the isolator here. Let's have a look in the nose gear. Kind of landing light and a taxi light. I don't think it was held together with this. <laughs> on the day quite interesting oh here's your uh there's where the missiles mounted what's going on here something's exhausting there and there's definitely places for missiles to mount. Well, got another grounding port over here. The build number should be on here. That's different again. Oh, you got some switches going on in here. Additional cooling air. I wonder if they had to add that. She got her tail hook down. The tail hook was a safety measure. All runways had a cable going across the far end. Oh, they got this one sealed up. 